Bending forward is something I look at with a lot of my athletes. I like to check out their strategy. So many times I see people bend forward either to touch the ground or in an RDL motion by pressing their hips way back and then coming forward. So that would be like an RDL motion or just when they bend over and flexing they'll um, push their hips way back. That motion, even if you are thinking that it's a hip hinge with a flat back and like an RDL, if your hips are going so far back, check out your ankles. The motion's actually coming mostly from plantar flexion of your ankles and knee hyperextension than actual hip hinging. Actual hip hinging would be my pelvis lifting up and over the femur heads, standing in the same spot or actually shifting forward on my feet. So that would be my um, pelvis spinning on my hips, hinging in this space in my hip joint right here in the front. Notice my shin angle stays relatively the same or even goes into a little bit of dorsiflexion. <clears throat> From a forward bending standpoint, it would need to have articulation of the spine occur with it. So unrolling your spine sort of like a slinky, lifting up and over, rolling down one bone at a time. When you run out of motion in your spine, the next thing to move would be your pelvis. Again, rolling up and over the heads of your femur, going straight down. When you fold down like this, your body is supported by the integrity of your entire fascial system. So then you can roll up very easily as well. That fascial system, specifically in your low back, <clears throat> is the lateral raphe's attachment from the erector spinae into the front of the abdominal muscles. So you're really getting that nice core control that actually decompresses your spine and lifts it up as you flex. Like I said, just like a slinky. So again, forward folding should be rolling down one bone at a time, weight staying over your feet, pelvis lifting up and over. Hip hinging in an RDL, again, weight staying over your feet, widening your sits bones, folding your pelvis up and over the femur heads, to sink in your hip for a hip hinge. That really loads the hips. If I RDL and push my hips back and plan to flex the, an the ankles, this puts all the load in my lumbar spine and makes it so I want to leave with my head to come back up and gives you that um, pain or tension and pressure in the low back. That would also be the same as I'm folding forward if I let my pelvis go back as I roll down and forward, forward, fold forward, now all the pressure is in my lumbar spine, and my lumbar spine flexes forward with compression, which is really bad on the discs. So you can even see it in the integrity or how the suspension system looks in my body. So rolling down, one bone at a time, moving my pelvis over my femur heads, you see this connection, this lift from my fascia. Without me having to work, I feel a connection into my core and in my arches. <clears throat> when I don't do that, it's this, all this compression and pressure in my back, especially on the way up. It puts a lot of pressure on my back. From an RDL standpoint, this feels really good. Flat spine, a lot of load in my hips. My arches are really working. If I plantar flex too much, shift my hips back, I feel a lot of adverse tension in my hamstrings and a lot of pressure right at the base of my sacrum. So take notice on what your habits are and try to change it and feel how that movement experience feels for you and, and see what feels better to your body.